I'd like to thank everybody for coming to the panel before Nathan Fillion's panel. I was listening backstage. I know what's going on out here, but I don't mind. It's okay. I appreciate it, guys. So, first thing out of the way, if any of you have not seen the finale, you're in trouble. You're in the wrong place if you haven't seen the finale. So you'll have to do earmuffs if we talk about the finale. So I do want to ask you, my first question isn't anything specific, but you were doing a panel somewhere else before it aired, and you said there were two things in the episode, in the finale, that you had never seen before. And I'm curious as to what those two things were. Well, the fight that we did in the tunnel where we had this big crane shot that was going over an army of Mirakuru soldiers, and we had this, this City of Heroes trinity of myself, with Roy, and Sarah, and Nyssa, and the League of Assassins, and just the scale of that fight, I don't think the scale of that fight has ever been done on TV before. And secondarily, the final fight between Manu Bennett and I in the flashbacks, we took the freighter set and they actually cordoned it off and they flooded it. And that was our last day of filming. And again, I just, I've never seen stuff like that on an action scale that's been on TV. And plus, I'm super proud of my show and I don't care if that's accurate or not. <laughs> well, we don't care either, we just love it. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna ask you to start lighting up if you would like. Oh, you're already there. Never mind, okay. Um, if you want to go ahead and start with our first question, and we'll start right down here. Hi. Hi. Um, so, you know when uh, Oliver's working out, and I don't know what they're called, he's doing those crazy... The, the salmon ladder? Yeah, that. Uh, um, have you ever done that and missed the next one? And, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Big time. Actually, there was a scene this year where I was... There was randomly a big tire in the middle of the arrow cave, and I was swinging a sledgehammer at it. And for whatever reason, that day, it was, it was like 42 degrees in the, in the arrow cave on the set, or like 200 degrees colder than it is here right now. <laughs> and I actually did the salmon ladder in between to stay warm. And I missed one, and I pulled a muscle in my neck, and we had to cancel the scene. Well, we got it back. <laughs> but, but yeah, you miss every once in a while. You miss. Not, not when the camera's rolling, though. Never. <laughs> Never. All you need to do, this is actually true. Whenever I'm doing a new parkour thing, and I can't get it, someone picks up a phone and starts recording. <laughs> and then I get it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, man. Hello. So, in the first season, um, did you have to film all of the flashbacks on the island uh, before you filmed the present day scenes? That's a good question. No, we, we filmed the island scenes in coordination with the episodes as we go. So, we, we generally speaking, we have what we'll call uh, an island day, or, you know, for season three, uh, spoiler alert, a Hong Kong day. And, and, uh, and I have to get in a little bit early, and I have to put on my horrible wig. And, not that it looks bad, but it's a horrible hair. And, does it look bad? And I typically have to, I also typically have to put on some type of black eye because I've, I've, I've got the crap kicked out of me on the island at some point. And, um, but no, we, we shoot those as we go along, as we go along. Thank you. Just Sorry. <laughs> Sorry? Are you Canadian? from Vegas. Okay. So, um, but uh, actually my friend Ebony back in Vegas uh, just became a big fan of yours and she follows you on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering what is it like to have 
like this huge fandom and all these fans because of Arrow. It's two million people on Facebook. It's really cool. You know, it, it's uh, it's cool. It's it's. Um, I think that I think that maybe coming out. I was actually standing over there watching some of the activities that were happening in between panels, which may have been a mistake because I got a little bit nervous. But uh, it's it's really cool. Uh, John Barrowman told me we were sitting, we were filming. It was an episode of the first season. I think it was our ninth episode, and he talked to me about the difference between the fan base and the people and how they appreciate your show from the first season to the second season to the third season. <laughs> I become good friends with the boys from Supernatural, and they're on their seventeenth season. And, and it, it's really amazing to see it keep growing because what what you see is you see people that were worried that your show was going to suck or it was going to get canceled. And once you get to season two and you have season three, people know so they get a chance to invest. And it's been really neat to see how the fans have reacted and bonded to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Barry. Yeah. Um, hi. Uh, first, thanks for being here. I know you don't want to be in Phoenix. Um, What's wrong with Phoenix? I have no problems with Phoenix. I'm in leather and it's 107 degrees outside. It's fine. Yeah, but you're committed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, we all love Arrow and um, CW's coming out with The Flash. Um, yeah. We're all really excited. Um, you're in the trailer, so I think we're all wondering, are you going to be a recurring character in The Flash series? Um, well, we have the we have the same executive producers. We have the same writers. We shoot in the same city. Um, you know, I've I've already been in the trail. Like I'm I'm in the pilot, uh, which was the coolest thing because it was it was like a callback to shooting our pilot. Same director, same director of photography. So I. I can't imagine that that we wouldn't uh, have me cross over, but uh, I haven't seen the scripts yet. Yes. <laughs> Hi, I liked your arrow costume, by the way. I was I was watching. Let's see how we look together. Okay. Your favorite 
favorite weapon of choice? Like, besides... You mean like personally? Yeah, personally. No. <laughs> uh, besides your fists. Uh, <laughs> you know, I shoot a compound bow on the show now. Um, but I feel like a compound is cheating a little bit. <laughs> I was out at a spot called Martin Archery in Walla Walla, Washington. I put this video on Facebook, and they gave me this compound that is like had this weird thing to pull the bow back, and then you removed your finger and you hit a trigger. And I was like, someone should be serving me tea while I'm doing this. I don't feel like I'm, I don't feel like I'm doing archery, so my, my my weapon of choice would be a recurve bow. audition story. Um, well, this wasn't a bad story in so much as it was, I mean, I had my cell phone go off in an audition once, which, but I mean, uh, yeah, I didn't do that joke. But, uh, but I actually, m my worst audition story for me personally was, I, first of all, I auditioned for Die Hard 5 like nine times, and that was frustrating. But I, I, I flew to New Zealand, and um, when they decided to, to carry on with Spartacus after Andy Whitfield got sick, uh, they decided to recast Spartacus. And the final audition in New Zealand was me and Liam McIntyre. And it all worked out. <laughs> but I actually did a scene with Man In. From, from season one, they, they brought him on set. I did a, a, a theoretical scene from season two, and a scene with Manu from season one, and some other scene, and some sort of weird, crazy fitness test, and there was so much makeup on my body, it was weird, and, but, uh, but I, left, I left Auckland, New Zealand, thinking that I was going to play Spartacus. I was, I was like, I got it, and I didn't. So that, that, that was tough. That was tough, but Liam, Liam did a wonderful job, and I was glad they got to carry on that show. Thank you, thank you. Hi. Hey. Uh, what line from the show has Oliver said that you think is most important for him to grow as a character? Oh my god. <laughs> I wish I had gotten that question beforehand. <laughs> Yeah. Do you mind? Hey, you know what? I'm gonna think about that for a minute. I'm gonna noodle it, and we will have just just remind me. I'll think. So if anyone else asks questions and it looks like I'm thinking about something else, I am. Good question. Really good Thank question. Thank you. What's your, what's your name? Quinn. 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 Yeah. Okay. Question. Okay. I'll think of it. I'll just I'll randomly go Quinn, and I'll. <laughs> First of all, I want to say your beard looks fantastic. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, how far would you like to see this show go, and is there an overarching story like already written for the complete series? Well, it's, it, is, it is a good question. Um, I'm... <laughs> when did I lose my ability to speak Quinn? No, I'm not. Uh, the, the, I mean, the show is built to be five years, right? Um, I'm under contract for six, so I would imagine that it won't end at five years, but, uh, but I, I would like to see the completion of the island storyline and, 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 and really get to know why Oliver was the way that he was when we found him. And, I mean, there's so many cool places that, that we can take the show, um, but that being said, it's so, it's such a difficult shoot that I can only think about our 47th episode, which is our first episode of season three. If I think beyond that, I get in big trouble. Also, you are way too good for Die Hard 5. <laughs> Thank 
No comment. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Uh, I love the show. I love dragging other people into the show so they can share my emotional pain, like my pain. <laughs> and my question is, um, you say you like to do a lot of your own stunts. So what was the hardest stunt they've had you do, or allowed you to do? Uh, in the first episode of our second season, there's this scene where Diggle and Felicity are on the island, and she steps on a landmine, and I'm 60 feet in the air in a tree, right? And they wanted to have my stunt double do it. I was like, are you insane? I, I want to do this. You're all harnessed up, it's all safe. So I did it, but I, I swing down, and then they, they exercise too much caution, and they hit the brakes for some reason, as if after I had swung, I would just close my eyes and not worry about slamming into a tree or something like that. And, and so when they hit the brakes, the, the cable actually ripped on my arm a little bit. And I had, if you ever seen pictures of me from Comic Con last year, it, 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 it looks like I've been in a huge fight because I have all these, I have these bruises up and down my bicep. Um, so that was tough. And it was also tough because I was relatively demonstrative when it came to insisting that I did the stunt. And then they actually brought me up in the tree. And I was like, Shh. <laughs> I'm really scared. <laughs> Pardon me? Questioning your life choices. Questioning my life choices. But you know what? It's uh, all the stunts, they get bigger all the time. I'm usually looking for more practical way to, ways to do things, but um, I love doing the stunts. And, 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 uh, and, and to me, there's always an added uh, a quality to the television show when you can tell that the actors are doing the stunts. That, that's my personal opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Quinn! 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 Quinn, I got you. Okay. I don't know if it was the most important line, but I thought that the most important scene from this year was the flashback between Oliver and Moira, where the last flashback, where uh, Oliver learns that he, quote unquote, lost the baby. And, and to see a different level of emotion from Oliver and him really question himself as to, as to what he would do if he was a dad and then to see a real sadness in, in him, excuse me. Um, I, I, thought that that was, I thought that that was the most important scene and the most important uh, stretch of dialogue. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Hey man. Are you gonna? Well, what I'm gonna ask you is like, are you gonna go on American Ninja Warrior? Cause my mom showed you, showed me a video of you training on the stuff there, like you climbing the wall. Yeah, I probably should. I probably should. But I'm hyper competitive and I want to win bad. So. Yeah, I mean, does anyone know anyone at NBC that I can get in touch with? I'll just put it on Twitter. I'll just put it on Twitter. I'll be like, hey, American Ninja Warrior people, hey. Let me come on your show. That'd be cool. I'd do it. I would win, too, I promise. Also... <laughs> you, you look too cute not to ask a couple of questions. Deathstroke. Deathstroke? Mm-hmm. I thought it was Batman's enemy. <laughs> Looking less cheap now, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> tell you what, if, uh, if you like some of the uh, enemies that Batman has fought, you're really gonna like season three. Hi. Hey. I, I'm bringing greetings from my hometown, Walla Walla. Walla Walla, Washington. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I, have, um, I have two questions. <laughs> One, what was the um, genesis for you to bring Knocking Point to Walla Walla? We're really thrilled about that. And second, are you ever going to have another um, showing party at the Red Monkey? 
So, a little background on this. My buddy and I have a, have a winery called Knocking Point, which is, which is Knocking Point with no case, where you knock an arrow on the bow. And we had Jim Lee design a label, and uh, I think we're going to do a comic book. That's, it's, it's weird. Uh, it, that, that's possible. But um, my buddy Drew is from Walla Walla, and uh, his family's there, and our relationships are there. Um, so we like having the winery there. Now, I did a viewing party at a bar called the Red Monkey in Walla Walla, and it was the episode that Moira died. <laughs> and it was really cool having like 200 people there for the viewing party, but I kind of wanted to get on the microphone beforehand and go, hey guys, it's maybe not the most celebratory episode. <laughs> And, and, and everybody was looking at me when it was all over, like I had misled them. <laughs> but uh, hey, listen, if we are back in Walla Walla next year for a, for a party, which is, our, which is our plan, and we're there for a Wednesday, we will absolutely do a viewing party. That was a blast. It was really cool. Thank you. Yeah. How's it going? It's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Uh, a couple thoughts, one question. Uh, first of all, I've been reading comics for years, and you're doing a great job with Oliver Queen and Green Arrow, so thank you for bringing thank you. the show. Um, also, I'm one of your two million Facebook followers. I want to congratulate your mom on thank the you. year. Uh, thank you. Hey, if I could, if I could, if I could take a moment, uh, I posted a picture, a picture of my mom and I a couple of days ago, and it was her, her one year anniversary of being cancer free. Thank you. I said thank you on the Facebook page, but uh, the, the, the comments and the number of likes and shares and just well wishes, that, I mean, stuff like that, that fills my heart up and it fills her heart up. And to everyone that follows me on that page and who was instrumental in making her feel that way, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yesterday, he talked a lot about the stunt choreography and yep. what you can and can't do and all that. But you all still say pretty fit. You all have a lot of practice you have to do. Yeah. Who's in the best shape out of uh, all of you and your own castmates? <laughs> I am. <laughs> if he had a different answer, I just want to let you know that. So. He's entitled to his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, look. Look, I'm not the one that's in a prison on the NU, okay? I won that battle. I'm not taking off my shirt. I'm on vacation. Thank you, man. So, um, I'm wondering, what, like, voodoo ritual or human sacrifice did you guys Wait a minute, hang on. Okay, I don't know what's going on right now, but this is the weirdest intro to a question that I've ever had. It'll, it'll make more sense in a minute. Okay. How did you guys break the curse of Summer Glau? You got season oh. three after having Summer Glau. Oh, she's been on some great shows, but after she's on there, they get canceled. Uh, I think the, I, I think the, uh, the long-winded answer to that is that I mean, Summer is obviously a wonderful, wonderful actor, and I think that I think that it was just circumstantial. You know what I mean? That would be the long-winded answer. The short-winded answer is we broke her neck before the season was over. <laughs> I love Summer, by the way. She and I are good friends, but yeah, she'll 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 find she'll find her footing. I have no doubt. First of all, I just want to thank you for coming here. I know filming starts in a month, so this is your vacation. Uh, and I'm here for you, not Nathan, so sort of like that. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you're in DC, and everything you do is great. Uh, the question I have about you and the show is uh, the big three. You know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Out of those three, who would you want to see, whether it's just a cameo or a guest appearance, come into Arrow? Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Always Batman. Yeah, we'll get Rob. You know, we had this idea that you know my cousin Robbie, who's the biggest, who's the biggest Batman fan on the planet, and I'm saying this in a room full of Batman fans. 
Uh, his password for everything is Bruce Wayne something. Don't tell him I said that. His, his Facebook pseudonym is Bruce Wayne. All this is all true. Uh, but uh, we always had this joke that, that, uh, that, that we would get him to come on the show and, you know, I just, I just walk by him and, uh, and he'd stop me and he'd go, Hey, Oliver, how you doing? And I'd be like, oh, I'm doing well, Bruce. And we'd chat for one second and then, it, and then that would be over. So that would be pretty cool. That'd be really cool. I know that he would do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, man. Nice to so, see you again. By the way, so in between panels, this guy was walking out. What was your name again? I'm sorry. Trevor. Trevor. And I saw his shirt and I just pushed him on the chest. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, hey. Oh. <laughs> that literally just made my weekend. <laughs> well, first I'd like to say thank you for such a huge Facebook presence. All my friends love it. Thank they you. speak so highly of it and just go, wow, this guy's just Awesome. And he needs to keep it up and keep doing it. Thanks, man. Also, my question is, how do you think that you and Grant will eventually get to the JLA? The Justice League? Yeah. Uh, and F Cancer. What's that? F Cancer. And, and F Cancer. Thank you, man. Um, the Justice League movie. The guy that I trained with at Tempest was actually just up there shooting Batman vs. Superman, and he told me secrets. <laughs> um, I will not. <laughs> Everybody turn off your cameras. Um, yeah, I, I, you know what, I, I, I don't know. I, uh, I think that um, the people that watched the Flash pilot that have seen it and saw the scene where um, where, where Grant and I interact, he's not even in his, he's not even in his costume. Um, you know, they, they, a lot of people are like, well that feels like the Justice League, and I thought that it felt like the Justice League too, so, um, I don't know if we'll eventually cross over into the movies, um, but, you know, that being said, we don't need to, you know, the, 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 the important part is, it's important that, it's important that Arrow and The Flash uh, are able to stand on their own and and be appreciated for what they are and the medium that they are in. And uh, if they wanted me to be in the Justice League movie and it worked out, that would certainly be something that I would be interested in. That being said, my most important and crucial priority is making season three better than season two. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Justin's my buddy. You know, there's people ripping fence of mine in here. What are you doing? Hey, man. Hey. Um, I heard, like, or I saw on uh, Facebook that you have a winery and you made a uh, vertigo uh, <laughs> wine. Will you be coming out with a uh, Miracuru wine? <laughs> it's not the worst idea. <laughs> what, would, what would it be? Like 33% alcohol? <laughs> And a little bit of Red Bull. And a dash of methamphetamine. We were gonna have Vertigo wine, and a winery from Italy emailed us and said, cease and desist. And we're like, really? And we got in touch with our lawyer, and the lawyer was, really? So it's actually now gonna be Verdant House Wine. True story, true story. But the label's the same. I know, it's shit. But, uh, but yeah, Mirapu would be a really good wine. What, uh, what type of blend would you like it to be? Because this can literally happen, like it can happen tomorrow. Red wine, white wine. Red wine? White? Hey, hey, alright. We'll see, we'll get into it. Thank you. Merlot. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I would like to ask about the future of Oliver and Felicity's relationship. Do you think um, when Oliver said I love you to her in the finale, did he really mean it? And do you think he meant it in the way we all hope he did? 
I think that whether or not that was a, uh, he meant it, it was a bait and switch, it was some combination of the two things, we are going to find out very early on in season three if, if he meant it or not. I, I do think that the one thing that I'm absolutely positive that he meant was in episode six of season two where he says to her, because of what we do, I don't think that I can be with anybody that I can really care about. I know that he meant that. So uh, we we shall see. But that that's going to be a big that's going to be a big point to sort of segue to to season three, having some broad strokes discussions about it. And and what we're finding with Oliver is Oliver is in a spot in the flashbacks where all of the humanity that he has is being stripped away. The Oliver that you met in the pilot that was a murderer, that was a killer. That's the guy that he is turning into. He's losing his humanity. So season three is very much about how much of his humanity does he want to get back? Does he want to love somebody? Does he want to be a hero? Does he want to write his family's name in Starling City and get back his company? What's important to him? And so we will clearly have to tackle what happened with Felicity uh, very early on. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, man. Hi. Um, my question is, what other DC character would you like to see on Arrow? Ra's al Ghul. <laughs> or Rish al Ghul, as the case may be. How do you say it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd like, I'd like to see, I'd like to see, I'd like to see that character for sure. Um, I don't know. DC is a really good partner for us, and and they are giving us access to characters that uh, they they wouldn't have even considered giving us in the first season, and they and they wouldn't have given us in the second season. But I think we've proven ourselves. I think we've proven that we can. Uh, represent a, a worthy version of characters that people care a lot about, and so I, I would imagine that there will be no shortages of uh, of uh, of good DC characters coming. And I, and I do know also that very early on in um, in season three we see a new superhero suit, so that counts for something. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, uh, and, I, and I don't think that the question is whether or not she's going to be a, a villain. I think the question is, is she going to be an evil? Because um, John Merrill is evil. <laughs> and he warps people's minds. Like, John can get you to do anything right now, I'm pretty sure. Like if, if, if John was here, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be like uh, doing handstands with my shirt off or something. <laughs> He's randomly gonna walk out right now. He's probably here, so probably senses. But uh, yeah, Thea will be back, and uh, and she will be a very different version of herself. She she resolved to to be something different and to never be weak. And uh, I would bet that she would follow through on that. Thank you. So about John, will he be coming back as a big villain in the next season? Yeah, John's going to be a regular for season three. He's going to be a serious regular for season three. Which is, a, which, is, which is a blast for me because we actually haven't gotten to do a, a whole bunch of work together. I mean, he changed me up once and threw water on me. But, but, 
But one of my big disappointments of one of my big disappointments of season two was that uh, I didn't see him. And uh, he and I were actually chatting last night that that it would be amazing for us to have to work together for for whatever reason. And I find out he's alive, and we have to work together. And I get to say something to the effect of, I hate you and I want to kill you, but we have something more important to do. And uh, the uneasy alliance between the Dark Archer and the Green Arrow would be, that would be, that would be sensational. But I, I would imagine, I would imagine Barrowman will be back and up to no good. That would be my, that would be my educated guess. Thank you. Thank you. Follow my uh, question up with a few things. I apologize for the shirt. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. And thank you for being so devoted to all of us. And if you haven't seen the final, uh, the episode of the uh, final episode of season two, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> <laughs> well, my question is, if he had a theme song, Oliver Queen, what would it be and why? Oh my God. <laughs> Quinn. <laughs> had a theme song. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the Ultimate Warriors theme song from WWE? Maybe Hulk Hogan's theme song? I don't know. I, I, I was a big wrestling fan as a kid. That's, that's what I'm... And, I mean, Superman's theme song? That doesn't work. That's not, that's not it. Um, I don't know, that, that's a really good question. What do you think? <laughs> well, let's see, I was avoiding, okay, if we're going for a heavy metal, don't do a hey man, nice shot, or shoot the thrill. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, that's something that's in my head. How about hit me with your best shot? <laughs> what? That's good. good I'm job. glad that finally came to me. <laughs> of all the fun stuff he's done to you. <laughs> so, I want to hear your side of everything that he's done to you and what it's like working with him. So the first scene that I ever shot with John was a, a scene that actually didn't... First of all, full disclosure, before I tell a funny story about him messing with me on set, I will say that working with John is, is, is a real privilege uh, to have somebody that has, has been on on a genre show and has been so awesome on it that he gets his own show. Um, to have him come on and to have him be able to answer questions and I mean I was a I was a fish out of water in the first season. I didn't know. You know, I didn't I had never um, I had never been the lead in a series. I'd been a series regular one time on Hunk and, and that was that was something that I had to do like two days a week, which I thought was a lot. So so to be able to ask John questions and to see the way that he that he handles himself, his level of preparedness, his professionalism. Um, he's, a, he's a person for me to emulate every single day. So from that standpoint, I'm incredibly lucky. Now let's get to him messing with me. <laughs> the first scene that we ever shot was a scene that actually didn't end up in the episode. It was episode seven, it was the first episode with the Huntress, and she had taken a shot and my mother had ended up in the hospital. Right? So, this was before we knew Barrowman was Tommy's dad, and he and I run into each other in the hallway, and all we know at this point is that I'm the good guy, and he's the bad guy, and why are these people talking? And the scene ended up getting cut because they didn't want us to meet until a couple of episodes later. So John says his lines, and after, he's, says his, after he says his lines, uh, Detective Lance and so Paul Blackthorne and Roger Cross are supposed to come in and question me. Now Paul Blackthorne is method, okay? And at this point in the season, Paul Blackthorne hates me. So whenever we would do a scene, I would always hear him 
yelling swear words about Oliver Queen in the hallway before he walked in, like really loud. And it would make me giggle, which was awkward. <laughs> so John uh, says all of his lines, and then as he's walking away, just before he goes around the corner, keeping in mind I'm the only person that can see him, it goes like this. by him that it's going to get worse before it gets better. Thank you. Yeah, the blooper reel this year is good. Oh, it is? Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> Can you give some backstory on that one? Give some backstory on that one. Someone asked this question to me on my Facebook page, and I had not seen Frozen. Okay? And I thought they were talking about cocaine. Which was really inappropriate. Apparently they weren't. Or maybe this specific person was. But in general, uh, I, I, think the, I think the answer in the most uh, uh, G-rated version possible is, yes, yes I would. I would like to I need to watch that movie, apparently. Yeah, but I'm really worried because I have a daughter now, and anytime I watch stuff like that, I cry like an idiot. Do it! Do so, it! Do it! Do that is, it's not a very Green Arrow-like thing to do. <laughs> By the way, but, but, but I, especially right now in Phoenix, I would like to build a snowman and see how long it lasts. <laughs> Okay. Okay. How long have you been doing archery? Did you start it with the show, or have you been doing it for a while? I started it with the show. Oh. Yeah. I I got up to Vancouver. It was my first day in Vancouver. I've told the story a couple of times. Uh, I got up to Vancouver, and um, Patricia Gonsalves, my archery coach, sat me down. And she was like, "We're going to do archery." I'm all fired up. And she sat me down, and she showed me a 45-minute movie of all of the ways that archery has been done wrong on film and television. Right? <laughs> they call doing archery wrong legolosing. <laughs> I'm just the messenger. Okay, I'm just repeating what I heard. I don't know, I, 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 I'm sure he's fine, I'm sure he does it okay. But the, but the big thing is, is, that, is that on the show, um, I'm... Uh, reaching for nothing, I'm knocking nothing, and I'm firing nothing because there is no safe way to shoot an arrow on a film set. Guns, fine. Arrows, not at all. Like even if you had a rubber-tipped head, it would really, really hurt. Um, so the form is the most important thing. So I've actually, I've, I've, I've gotten really into archery. Um, I like to do it, you know, just on my downtime and and and, and stay up with it and. Um, and I feel like I've gotten good, which is important. Because every once in a while I'll be on a TV show and people will be like, let's do an archery competition. <laughs> I'm petrified that I'm going to lose, and the show loses all its credibility. So, like, I was on live with Kelly and Michael, and I was watching them warm up, and they were god-awful. And, and, then it, and then it comes to the, the cameras rolling, Michael Strahan knocked one like four inches from the bullseye, and Kelly Ripa, who could barely even pull back the bow, her shot was awesome. I thought they wouldn't even hit the target, and I, I had to, I had to get them. I did. <laughs> I, I, oh, I beat them. I beat them. You can, it's, it's, it's online. You can, you can look it up. Thank you. Hey Stephen, how's it going? Good man, how you doing? Um, so I saw your video on Facebook that you posted of you training at Tempest Free Running Academy. Yeah. Um, I actually know a few guys there. Um, William Spencer and Kate Sinclair. Okay. Um, Daniel Lavaca is also there. I yeah. I know those guys. I, I mostly trained with a guy named Paul Darnell who uh, doubled Henry Cavill in Man of Steel for the Blind Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, but um, 
my brother, he's, he's, he lives in LA and he spends a few times there. Um, but I was going to ask you, how important is um, that kind of training for Arrow? Is the free running parkour kind of training? It's really good. I mean, it, it's, it's really important. The, the pilot, if you go back to the pilot, there's this scene where I'm being interrogated by these three guys in masks and, you know, they're hitting me with the taser and stuff, whatever they were doing. And, uh, and then, you know, I tell them that I'm going to kill them. And, and, uh, and then we fight and there was this parkour sequence that happened shortly thereafter where I did a, I did a relatively simple parkour move, but I felt like, I felt like the fact that you could see me doing the action so early on in the pilot caused people to, to invest and buy in. Because you only get one shot. You only get, what's that expression? You, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And I thought that that, that, that sequence, and that parkour sequence in the second act of the pilot was critical to people that, you know, maybe wanted someone else to play Green Arrow or, or, wanted, or weren't, you know, particularly pumped about a Green Arrow TV series. Them seeing that sequence I think maybe changed a couple of minds. So uh, doing parkour and, and also just staying fit is, is incredibly important. Um, and that, that also, that Tempest is the spot that birthed the salmon ladder and it being a part of the show too. Because our pilot director saw that they had one there and said, hey, can you do this? And I went, uh, probably. And, and so yeah, so I, it's, it's very it's super important for me to stay up with that stuff. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Um, what's the most interesting or embarrassing thing that has happened to you at home? Interesting. I'll tell you what was interesting. There was a young girl named uh, Nikki. Is Nikki here? Okay. So Nikki came up for a photo today, and, and Nikki was really, Nikki was really nervous, and and the and the actual the um, the camera or the monitor broke. And so we I had to stand there and chat for a little bit, and I felt really bad because it, because it seemed like although she wanted a picture, she wanted to get out of there as fast as possible. <laughs> but, uh, so that so that that was interesting, uh, strange, and I don't mean strange in a in a bad way at all. I like strange, but there was a uh, there was a there was a guy in Vancouver, really nice guy, who had a bunch of Oliver's tattoos for the show. He had those tattoos for real and uh, he had like a shadow tattoo on his back shoulder and he had me sign it and he got that tattoo that was something I'm hoping for a lot more of that no but you know what this is uh, I've done maybe four or five uh, cons this year and it's uh, it's really rewarding one of, one of the toughest stretches for us in the season is when we start filming in July and then the show doesn't come out until October. And we can't see and experience the fans reacting and appreciating the show. Uh, because that, that is what keeps us going on really long days. You know, when, when it's, you know, it's raining and it's late and you're shooting the scene for five hours. Um, not that it's actual work, let's, not, let's be clear. But, um, but uh, seeing the fans' reaction is always so, uh, so rewarding. And, coming to these Comic Cons and meeting people like Nikki and, and all of you guys is that it's, it's a huge fuel for the fire of wanting to make the show as good as possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. So at the end of season two, um, you and Malcolm are fighting, you're struggling, uh, and then at the end you beat him. Later in season two, he comes back. Uh, John Barrowman comes back. Yeah, yeah. What was your reaction to that? There's a great John Barrowman meme that says, I don't always die, but when I do, I don't. <laughs> I mean, me personally, I was ecstatic that John came back. When I found out that John was going to be a regular in, in, in our third season, I was fired up. I wanted to high five people. And. <laughs> Uh, but I, it, it'll be really interesting to see how Oliver reacts. I don't know how Oliver is going to react because I haven't, I haven't seen the scene yet. My, I mean, my, my short guess would be not well. 
but uh, we, we will see. I'm, I'm just, I'm, again, I'm, I'm really grateful that John's going to be a part of the family for uh, for our third season, and hopefully, hopefully, well beyond that. It's awesome. Thank, thanks, man. Hi. Hi. Um, well, I just realized just a few seconds ago that you were going, you said that you're going to have more DC characters in there. And I was wondering, um, we've already seen Roy Harper in the show, and he has this comic series now called okay. Red Hood and the Outlaws. Please, would you beg your your people to have a uh, have Red Hood? Are we on the phone or? Yes. Okay. I, don't, I don't care. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> you could get Red Hood and Starfire on the sh on the show. And if you need someone to do like a flashback of Jason, I will do that. <laughs> are you are you not to do that? Uh, I try some. I try. The, the the correct answer is not yet. Uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool, but you know what? One of the one of the good things about our show, I think personally, is that is that the guys that are writing it and creating it are huge Green Arrow fans. I mean, there there are people that were that have excuse me that have been on the Green Arrow book. So if there is a character that is popping in the comics, uh, like Starfire, Starfire, right? Yeah. Then I, I would bet that they will eventually incorporate that character into our universe. Right. But be patient. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know if I believe you, but try and be patient. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, well, I was, okay. <laughs> you, 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 knew, you knew this was coming. <laughs> I know. But, um, so I absolutely love the finale, but Isabel was about to say something before Felicity badassly hit her with her car. <laughs> I mean, come on. Sarah can hit people with sticks, but... Felicity, has Felicity with the car, yeah, big yeah. time. And um, so Isabel was saying something like, you know, Felicity and the way she talked to me, that do you have any idea how she was going to finish that sentence? Because I, I absolutely love the finale, but that was infuriating. I was like, what did Felicity say to her? This is a really unique question. Well, it's a very I, niche. My first question was stolen, so I had to Time to think about it. Well, I mean, no one stole it. They just they just lined up before you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I, I I feel like um, you know, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, and I, I feel like uh, I feel like um, uh, when uh, Isabel was uh, with Oliver, maybe she sensed that um, he didn't have she didn't have his uh, full attention. So, okay, no, that's perfect. Sorry, I mean, there, are kids, there, are, there are kids in the room. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I got this on my phone, just in case you forget, which I don't. Uh, um, in one episode, there was a high pitched voice in the jail cell when you guys were going on that mission with all the other bad guys. Uh, and I was like, oh my god, is that Harley Quinn? So I was wondering, uh, was it Harley Quinn, and is she going to be a problem in, in season three? I don't know if uh, she's going to be involved in season three, but the the, the high pitched voice in episode sixteen, Suicide Squad, was absolutely on the grid. And we got. I mean, one of the cool things was we got. Is her name Tara Strong? Yeah, we got we got Tara Strong to do the voice. I didn't know about any of this, by the way, because I wasn't in that scene. But I'm a fan, and I remember seeing the preview. And and feeling like I, I should have known that this was going to happen, <laughs> and, I, and I also know that uh, that there was an additional there was an additional scene with uh, with that character in the finale that again still in the cell, still you know still with her back to us, but it had to get cut for time. Our finales are always like 18 minutes too long, <laughs> and so that that got cut. But I, I, I hope you know I was. I was actually really taken aback by the absolutely um, incredible reaction on the internet when people heard her voice or even saw her image in the trailer. So Harley Quinn is obviously very popular, yes. Let's, let's hope we get her on there. Thanks, man. Hello. Hello. My question is, 
when you got cast it as Green Arrow, did you do any research, like reading the comics or looking at TV shows, and then you compare your, like, it's, it's, your it's, 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 it's a good question. I, I didn't actually do any research prior to the pilot because, you know, the pilot had been signed off on by Jeff Johns. The pilot was being directed by uh, David Nutter, who is the greatest director of pilots in the history of television. He directed the pilot for Arrow, Flash, Smallville, Supernatural. Uh, he directed the Red Wedding for the Game of Thrones. The man is the man is a legend, and and so my mo for the pilot was to do whatever the hell he told me to do. And, and then and then thereafter, I visited DC and met with Jeff Johns, and it's actually really fun. I got to meet Mike Grell. Uh, this weekend, which is really cool, signed the poster that he drew for the pilot for me, which was fantastic. And, uh, and, and after the fact, I did a lot of reading on Green Arrow. Green Arrow Year One, Longbow Hunters, um, and I read the comics that come out in the New 52. And uh, I mean, the thing, ironically, slight, slightly off topic, the thing that I am most proud of, possibly most proud of, in the entirety of the show, is the fact that John Diggle is now a part of the Green Arrow comic book canon. And the fact that David Ramsey has done a portrayal that has resonated so much that it's become part of part of the comic book, I think is the greatest compliment that you can pay our show. So, um, yeah, Diggle. Diggle rules. And, uh, so yeah, but now I keep up. Now I keep up. Now I know a lot about the character. And uh, Easter egg that not a lot of people caught in the pilot where I confront Adam Hunt and I say, I want you to transfer this money to Starling City Bank Account 1141, that's November 41, that's when Green Arrow came out. Thank you. Lucky you! Hi, if you could trade Roy, I love Roy, but if you could trade Roy for any sidekick, who would it be? That's gonna punt Roy? He hasn't even really had a chance. Uh, but if I had to trade him? Nightwing. Well, I can go rapid fire. I see it right there. I have... No, no, no. On my view, actually, about three minutes. Oh, three minutes. Great. Good. Thank you. Um, my, I have kind of a two-part question. Um, when you were a kid growing up, what was your favorite superhero and uh, your favorite supervillain? My favorite superhero growing up was was Superman. Was the Christopher Reeves <laughs> Superman? I mean, that was that, that was my childhood. And so, by definition, my favorite villain was was General Zod, right? It's Terrence Stamp is General Zod. If I could pick one guest star, if I could pick one guest star for the show, it would probably be Alan Rickman. But if I could pick two guest stars for the show, it would, the John Barrowman was probably the second one. If I could pick three, it would be Terrence Stamp. I have a part of my question. Um, okay. Where do you, Jared, and Jensen hang out? And uh, can I come? And yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. I'm actually going to visit Jared because, I mean, he and I are clearly in love. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> Don't do that to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we hang out to, uh, in a it's a it's a super secret uh, location in Vancouver uh, for leads of CW shows. <laughs> if you become the lead in a CW show, you can absolutely come. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, really interesting, it would, that's a really interesting opportunity. You know, D uh, Diggle is about to have a kid. Oliver theoretically has a kid. I got a funny story. I pitched, I pitched an idea for how we would uh, be reintroduced to the baby mama because she's now in Central City. So I pitched this to our producers. <laughs> And our, 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 one of our producers who's on both shows goes, oh, that's a great idea. A couple of weeks later, he's up for the finale. He comes up to me and he goes, hey, we have a great idea for how to reintroduce the baby mama. <laughs> and he starts pitching me my idea. 
and I let him go for about five seconds, and I'm, you know, I'm going to want you to go back right now and think about the genesis of this idea and where you heard it for the first time. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, I think that that dynamic would be cool. I think it would be really cool. Really cool. Last one. Last question. Here we go. Okay, so as was mentioned, Barman talked about how he likes to prank you. Oh, that can't. I know that drop. I know that dropping the mic is a thing, but this can't be the last question. Uh, so my question was, do you have any plans to prank him back and make this war, seeing as you're competitive? Is he here? I, I think it's a good idea. I, th I, think, I think it's a good idea. I don't know what's going to happen to take it to the next level, but, um, but it's probably not going to end well. <laughs> probably not going to go. Thanks, man. One more, one more, one more. Hello again. Hi. Um, really quick, um, the flashbacks and current time, we've seen Oliver in the flashbacks go from no humanity to, or from being human to losing his humanity. Present time, you're going the opposite way. Yeah. In season three, with the Hong Kong part, are we going to see where he actually makes an, a, a coherent decision or a conscious decision to lose his humanity? Because so far, with the flashbacks, he's kind of been reacting to everything. No, I, I think that what's going to happen is that is that in the flashbacks in season three, we're basically going to see Oliver it, with with no choice, like sort of a sort of an indentured servitude, and um, and the way that the the way that the people that he is working for convince him to work for them, nobody is going to see that coming. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. And, and it gives us an opportunity to, uh, to um, bring back some people on the show. I'm not, I'm not telling you. Thank you. Mr.